I personally, my personal opinion, I would not agree with that. Okay? I would not agree with that. And first of all, I believe that, uh, again, obviously each token, yeah, must be analyzed uh, individually. Okay? Remember that. This must be remembered. Yeah? I am not giving a general opinion that all funds token are sure compliant. That is not what I am saying. But what I'm saying is that each token must be analyzed individually. However, some of these concerns that I have mentioned, uh, for me, they are not problematic. For example, when it comes to football club uh, fund token, for example, yeah, although that I have mentioned that these rights and these benefits, these utilities that you have access to, that they are not always, you know, identified correctly, or we might not know, you know, for how long you're going to get access to, I believe that the, it's minor. It's not problematic at all from a Sharia perspective. Why do I believe that? I believe that because a fan token, yeah, a fan token should be judged on what he actually represents in its primer, primary status, not in its secondary status. The primary status of a fan token is for is for fun that you know as the name is indicating it's a fun token and you know when you have love for your football uh, club etc you want to be part of it you want to engage with that club as much as possible and the fun token is giving you that chance and that opportunity to engage with that, with, with the token and after that it doesn't matter what perks you know come with it you know, these utilities, they're minor, they're secondary. And there is a, a, a legal, uh, uh, how do you call it? There, there, there is a, a rule in, the, in, the, in jurisprudence that says, you know, that what can be forgiven in, you know, the secondary uh, things, yeah? Uh, th th there are certain things that can be for forgiven in, in the secondary matters, but they are not usually forgiven in the primary matters. Meaning that sometimes the gharal, for example, the gharal in an asset that you're selling, yeah, if the gharal is in the actual primary asset that you're selling, then, you know, it's not going to be forgiven. Yeah, and therefore, you know, it's going to make the contract as impermissible and you cannot trade with it. However, some certain things, they come as secondary. They're not the primary things of that asset. They're not the primary things of that commodity. When you're buying it, yes, you're going to get cer certain things that is going to come with it, but you're not buying the asset for that purpose. Yeah. So these secondary issues that come and that follow, even if we do not know about them or we cannot identify them, then it's fine. You know, we can look away and think, okay, it's fine. It's not going to make the contract as impermissible. So here in the case of fan token, when you're buying a fan token, you're not buying it. I mean, the purpose, there might be people that are actually buying it to gamble on it, yeah? But how are we going to judge that? I mean, each person is different, yeah? But most people, you know, who get involved in the, in, in, you know, when they buy membership, for example, from their club, it's because they want to be part of it. They love their club. They want, you know, they, they want, they are happy to give money to the club so that the club can succeed. Or they want to be engaging you know, with, with the club. They want to be to feel that they are part of the club. And that is a primary objective of, you know, what people, you know, fans, you know, you, you, you usually they want. And this is why there is, um, you know, uh, Socios, who is, which is an app, you know, that sells fan token. They have said that mo they believe that most of their users are not here to speculate. They're not speculators. They are here to engage. You know, they, they, they're here to buy fan tokens so that they can engage with their clubs. So now, after that, these utilities, they're just secondary. Whether you can quantify them or not, it doesn't matter. In fact, even if these rights or these utilities, they're accessible, you know, for an unlimited amount of years. You know, even from a Shire perspective as well, it might not be problematic because there, there are some types of hukuk, certain type of uh, rights that are called, you know, hukuk uh, urfiyad, you know, they're customary rights. And 
Sometimes it might include, I don't know, rights to water, for example, or rights uh, you know, of passage, for example. Yeah, and many scholars have said that, you know, if these rights are accessible, you know, forever or for an unlimited amount of time, it's fine as well. Some scholars have said, no, it's not fine. You need to, 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 to know for how long, et cetera. But some scholars say, no, even if it's unlimited, it's fine. So I personally believe that, you know, the fact that, you know, these rights are accessible for an indefinite amount of years, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter because these rights are secondary anyway. With people would not be buying fan tokens, yeah, for these things. I mean, again, people's intention is different. But the, what what is the intention behind the fan token itself? Again, remember, the club who is issuing the the, fan, the, the, the token is doing it so that they can raise money, and is doing it to give the chance to the fan to be closer, to feel closer to the club. That is the intention. These things, these utilities, these right, they come after, you know, they, they're just secondary, okay? So that, that's my, uh, my, my take on it, that, you know, fun, fun tokens, you know, from football clubs, et cetera, they should be permissible, unless you have access to something, to cert certain utilities that are completely haram, et cetera. But overall, I do not see any issues with fan tokens issued by a football club.